Hey guys, it's Ryan Bridge the Bugman, and I want to welcome you to today's show. Look, today we are talking about Beatles. Yeah, man, Beatles. All right, look, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Bridge. People call me the Bugman. I go out to schools, the churches, libraries, birthday parties, everywhere I can go. And what I do is I go out and I find groups of people that want to learn about bugs and insects and cool, creepy stuff, and I get the job of teaching people about bugs and insects and cool, creepy stuff, man. That's what I do for a living. So that's why we're here today. We're going to talk about bugs and insects and cool, creepy stuff, but we are specifically focusing today on beetles. And look, I don't think I don't think there's enough hours in the day. Uh, I know there's not enough minutes in this this particular hour because we're going to run out of time. But uh, there are so many cool things going on with beetles, most of which people just don't know. People see beetles and we're either very unimpressed with them or we are very, very freaked out by them. That's usually the two reactions people have from beetles because most people don't know much about beetles. Let me fill you in a little bit on what are, what's going on with beetles. First of all, beetles are insects. Okay, and we're going to talk about what, what makes a beetle an insect in a minute, but let me, let me explain to you. Look, you're talking about one of the most numerous of the insects. All right, there are 10 quintillion insects on this planet. That's, that's a 10 with 18 zeros. 10 quintillion insects. That's a lot of insects. All right, the, the reason all those insects are on this planet is to keep the food chain fat and happy. They're the smallest thing in a food chain, essentially. And because of that, Everything bigger than an insect is going to try and kill it, either because it's hungry or because we don't like them. All right, every day they're just trying to survive another day, man. That's all they're trying to do. They're not biting you and stinging you and hurting you. That's not why insects are here. It's not why beetles are here either. Beetles are doing the same thing all the insects are doing, they're taking care of the food chain as well. But beetles come equipped with lots of other jobs. There are over 350 thousand known beetle species right now and every day and every day there's more being discovered and those bug guys go out there and they find these they discover them they describe them and we add those to the list you know there's that's a lot of beetles man you're gonna see more beetles in your lifetime than any other living thing that's just physics at work all right 350 thousand different types of beetles right now on this planet that we have identified. That is mind boggling. Beetles are gonna come in all shapes, all sizes, all colors. And even if they're creepy, they're still cool. So let's get in, let's talk about beetles. What makes a beetle an insect? First of all, let me use our largest beetle here in the United States. That's the Hercules beetle. Cool beetles, man. Hercules beetles. Six legs, three main body parts, everybody has antenna. That's what makes an insect an insect, and guess what? That's what makes beetles insects, too. They have an exoskeleton, so they, they're an invertebrate, so they have an exoskeleton. They got that hard shell, that armor on the outside of the body. That gives them the protection they need, keeps all the, you know, all the fun parts in the inside, right where they belong. It gives them protection. It's armor plating, if you will. Now they have elytra on the outside. That's what the that's what the lower part is called. Over the abdomen is called elytra. And they actually fold up. And I'm going to show you what they do in a minute because they actually play another role as well. But those are protecting the abdomen, the soft abdomen. So six legs, three main body parts, two antenna. Six, three, two. That's what I do. That's that's how you identify an insect. Okay, six, three, two. Same thing with beetles. Now, antenna. They have antenna because they need them to smell with. All insects have antenna and they use them in order to smell. Now, antenna are gonna come in all shapes, all sizes, all colors. And there are beetle, there are beetles out there that have antenna that you can barely even see. They're so tiny. Lots of insects. And then there's other insects out there that have antenna that are so big they're named after their antenna. These are longhorn beetles. And they're called longhorn beetles because they have long antenna that kind of resemble the long. Look, I mounted this one up so it looked kind of like a longhorn. 
kind of like a longhorn steer. Kind of cool. Check out the antenna on this longhorn beetle. Look how cool that is. Look at those antenna. Isn't that cool? The way they fan out. That enables this beetle to smell even better when it's navigating around. So you can bet this beetle really, really relies on scent in order to find its food and especially find mates. Because, you know, that's kind of what bugs are doing most of the time. They're just running around waiting to find a mate. So six legs, three main body parts and antenna. Now, here's the thing, all right? They're not out there biting and stinging and hurting people most of the time. There are beetles out there that have pinchers. Okay, now if you find a beetle like this, look at the headgear on these guys. Isn't that cool? Now think about this. If you found a beetle like this and you picked it up and you pop it in your mouth, what's it going to do? It's going to pinch you. It's not going to kill you, but it's going to hurt and you spit him out and guess what? He gets to live another day. They have the pinchers for several reasons, not for biting people. Don't ever get caught up in that. All right, insects aren't out there to bite people. You grab, a, you grab a bug like that and you pick a fight with a beetle like that with big pinchers, you're gonna lose quick. But all the beetle's trying to do is stay alive another day. That's just a reaction to what you do. If you leave the beetle alone, he's not gonna hurt you. They're not gonna chase you down and tackle you and pinch you. That's just not what they do. So don't get caught up in that. Just because they have pinchers doesn't mean they're out there looking to hurt the world. Some of these beetles are, carn are carnivorous, which means they're going to go out and they're going to hunt down caterpillars or slugs or snails and different things, and they eat those. So some of them are a predator. Other times they have those for fighting over females. Most of the time, it's all about fighting over females. Let me get back to the Hercules beetle right here in the U.S. Largest beetle in the U.S. Look at the headgear on this one right over here. That's the male. He has two horns coming off. They look kind of like pinchers, don't they? But they're not. They're horns. One comes off the forehead, the other one comes up over right off the thorax, up over top of the head. And if he moves his head up and down, he can actually open and close those things. So it, they act like pinchers, but they're really not used like pinchers. So don't worry, just because they have these things, they're not out there trying to hurt people. They're not out there you know, trying to take over the human race. If they wanted to take over the human race, they'd have had you at breakfast yesterday. So there, bugs and insects are way better at their jobs than we are at ours. Now, insects, you know, like beetles, they're going to stay under the ground most of the time. They're going to hide under substrate. They're going to hide, you know, inside rotten logs. They're going to hide because they are terrestrial. Generally, they're down on the ground where the predators are going to find them. But when they're immature, a baby beetle, if you will, all right, the larva, or what is known as a grub, of a beetle, because most of us have probably heard of beetle grubs. Check this out, man. They live in dirt. Watch these guys. These are Hercules beetle larva. These are Hercules beetle grubs. Look how big and creepy and cool this beetle is. And it's a beetle grub. It's not an adult. It hasn't made a pupa yet. Once it makes that pupa and it hatches out of the pupa, then it'll turn into the beetle and crawl its way up out of the ground. But this is what they look like when they're under the ground. And they're feeding on rotten oak. I got a bunch of them in. Check this out. Here's another. Ooh, there's a jumbo. That's a big one. Whoa. They're just... Beetle grubs. They're not hurting anybody. Yeah, they're creepy and yeah, they're kind of ugly. They live under the ground. They're not hunting people. Don't get caught up in all that. Just because they're scary, just because you don't know anything about them, don't be afraid of them. You know, we're afraid of the unknown because that's what humans do. Don't sweat it. Now, the Hercules beetles, largest beetle in the, in the U.S., these get confused a lot of times with what is a rhinoceros beetle. And here, this is a rhinoceros beetle. Big difference. I want you to notice the one in the middle. Okay, the one in the middle is the male it has the horn, and that horn, not only is the beetle a lot smaller, but the horn is too. But you notice it's a single horn, much like a rhinoceros. Yeah, there's one with two horns too, but you know what? Much like a rhinoceros, it has that one single horn. Much smaller. It's only about the size of the end of my thumb. And these are pretty common. 
Uh, we find these, you know, midsummer, late in the year here in Pennsylvania, but you can get them a lot sooner down south. But they're just, just beetles. But that's the true rhinoceros beetle. Now look, when you go to the tropics, all the rules change. This is a Hercules beetle from Pennsylvania, here in the U.S. This is what a lot of them in the U.S. look like, just like that. Maybe a little bigger sometimes. These are weird. This is what the Hercules beetle looks like when you go to Panama or you go to South America. You get into Central and South America, man, bugs are going to get big. Bugs and insects grow big because there's a longer growing season. They don't have winter, so what they do is they grow them big, man. There's no winter, so that grub in the ground has a longer time period to grow, and it just keeps eating, and it gets, gets bigger and bigger. And bigger grubs, bigger caterpillars are gonna produce bigger insects, bigger adults. That's just how it works. That's why things in the tropics generally are bigger than things around here. All right, now, let's talk about the jobs they do. Look, we're talking about you know 350,000 different beetles, most numerous insect. Uh, there's got to be a reason for that. You know what? They come equipped with jobs. The job of insects is to keep the food chain fat and happy. That's the primary job. The job of beetles, this is where things get really interesting. Because you know what? The reason, the purpose that beetles are on the planet, the number one job of beetles is pollination. No, for real. This comes from Drexel... Drexel Museum and Drexel Academy in Philadelphia. All right, this is this is legit information. So, I know I know I'm good on this. All right, beetles. The number one job is pollination, and unfortunately, we take bees and we put them on this weird pedestal. All right, uh, obviously, there's bees and hummingbirds and butterflies, other things out there pollinating as well. But we put bees on this weird pedestal and we're meant to believe, and I mean that just the way it sounds, we're meant to believe that bees are the be-all, end-all of pollinators. And without bees, you know, the universe is going to collapse and the planet dies and it's all doom and gloom. Now look, bees are important, all right? First and foremost, bees are very important. If bees stopped pollinating flowers tomorrow, it's not going to be a good thing for the planet, all right? Everything's going to suffer. But we give bees a bigger, higher part, part of that pedestal than I think they deserve. I like bees, don't get me wrong, but beetles, beetles are pollinating over 80% of the flowers on the planet. Eight out of 10 flowers in your garden are pollinated by beetles, not by bees. That's legit. Take me on that, all right? Beetles are the number one pollinator going on over 80 percent that is a big deal i'm not going to get too big into numbers i'm just going to tell you that bees bees are not on this planet to pollinate that's not their number one job there are bees that are pollinating all right let's go with that and those are important bees they're important insects because without those things are going to things are going to go bad but the reality is is that the purpose of bees and wasps and ants and hornets on this planet is not pollination it is insect control they're out there collecting caterpillars and stink bugs. There's one that goes out and collects, you know, beetles. And they're out there collecting they bring spiders. They bring these things back to their homes and they feed them to their kids. That's why bees and wasps and ants and hornets exist. That's the number one purpose of those things is to keep the insects in check so that things don't get out of balance. Huge deal. Very important. Don't let me take away from that. And they do some pollinating as well. There's always a few bees that are out there strictly pollinating because that's where their niche is. Those are important, but let's not give bees too much credit because the beetles are still doing more in this case. Now, beetles also do other things as well besides pollination. Beetles are going to go out and clean up dead animals. For real, man. I don't want to do that. You probably don't want to do that. Nature gives it to the beetles. So beetles are going to go out and clean up dead animals. When an animal dies, beetles are the first thing to show up one of okay they'll break it down it begins to stink a little bit and then the flies and the coyotes and the vultures they come in they clean up that mess but beetles are one of the first things to show up on dead animals another thing that beetles do beetles this is something you probably take for granted every day beetles clean up animal poop 
Yes, we're going to have that talk. All right. Every animal on the planet poops. Somebody's got to clean it up. I'm not going to clean it up. You're probably not going to clean it up. It's up to the dung beetles. Dung beetles are going to clean up animal poop. These are the largest dung beetles in the world. They come out of Africa. Now, if they're in Africa, what animal do you think they're chasing around to clean up that poop? The elephant. Look, it's the largest dung beetle in the world. And if you haven't been to Africa yet, you need to go. I'm a big advocate for Africa. I love Africa. Been there five times, man. It's a really cool place. Everybody should go to Africa one time. If you haven't been there, you need to go. I'll tell you why. We're going we're gonna to tangent. Let's, let's tell you why. First of all, it's very expensive for, for us here in America to go to Africa. That's a big deal. Don't, don't, don't tell yourself that it's impossible. Don't let anybody else tell you that's impossible. Commit. All right, it's like a $2,000, you know, plane ticket. It's a lot of money to set foot in Africa. But once you're there, guys, once you're there, you can live for like two or three weeks sometimes on a $5 bill. It is remarkably cheap to live there. Once you get there, you just got to commit and go. You go to Africa, the first thing you're going to see is wild elephants. And when you see wild elephants, now you're going to see wild elephant poop. And guess what, man? Wild elephant poop is like a stack of bowling balls this high. Not kidding you. Nature is so cool and so efficient that it brings the largest dung beetles in the world to come and clean that mess up. That is how good nature is. That's how efficient it is. And that's how important they are. They, nature knows we're not going to do these things. Nobody else is out there cleaning up you know, animal poop. Look, even the Egyptians understood how important a dung beetle was. I get a lot of questions. People want to know, do I have an Egyptian scarab beetle? First of all, I have never been to Egypt. So the answer to that is no. Secondly, I need to, I need to impress upon people. The Egyptian scarab beetle is a poop beetle. Now ask yourself why the Egyptians loved and appreciated a beetle that cleaned up poop. It answers questions. The dung beetle rolls the dung in a ball and he rolls it across the ground. He buries it and they get down and they mate and then she lays an egg on it and then they cover it up and then they go find more poop. That's the cycle. The grub, remember the grubs I showed you, the grubs inside that, that poop ball are going to grow. They're going to eat that poop and they grow and then that grub is going to dig its way up out of the ground the following season, the following summer, and it's going to hatch out, and now it's a brand new adult. Well, the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, saw that ball of dung getting rolled across the ground, and it looked almost like the sun going across the sky. And then that, that ball of dung gets pushed into the ground, and guess what? That's the sun going behind the horizon. And then the following season, the Egyptians were enamored because this new fresh beetle would find its way up to the surface after right where that that dung ball was buried. And guess what? They realized that that resembled the sun god Ra rolling the sun across the sky. And the sun goes behind the horizon and from new you know, from from within, you know, new life springs. So that's why they did that. They recognized that as, you know, as important. So they made it one of their gods. They idolized it almost like one of their gods. And that's why you see the Egyptian scarab beetle all over, uh, you know, like the hieroglyphs. You know, very, very cool stuff. Um, I can get deep on that. I don't want to get too caught up on that. But you get it. Beetles are important. Even back in ancient Egypt, the dung beetles were very, very important. People love beetles, man. Face it. There's lots of reasons. All right. The pollination, the dead animals, the dog poop, poop. Okay, you understand. Very cool stuff. Now, let's talk about flight because beetles fly. Uh, not all beetles fly, but most beetles have wings. They may not necessarily use them. There's some beetles out there that use their wings on such rare occasions uh, that it, probably there's times when we've never seen them actually fly. But, but most beetles have wings that work. The problem is they have effectively four wings, but only two of them are flight wings. Let me show you how this works. Remember we talked about the elytras, the hard shells that cover up the abdomen. Check this out. This is, this is another, this is another one of our big Hercules beetles from down in Panama. Check this guy out. This one's out of, this one's out of Panama. The other one's out of Venezuela. This 
is what it looks like when a beetle flies. Now check out the two front wings. Those are the elytras that pop up off the abdomen and they hold in place. They don't move, they just sit right there. Those flight wings are the coolest thing in the world because they're, they're almost triple jointed, which is really weird. They, they come out, then they come out, and then they come out a third time. And then the beetle uses those to fly. So those are the flight wings. Amazing natural engineering going on there to get those joints to work the way they do in order to fold that huge wing up inside that elytra. And these things are neat. They, when they fly, they sound like a small airplane. They, they buzz really loud. They're not always good flyers. They usually fly until they hit something. Um, now, again, let's go back to Africa real quick because I want to take you, we're, we're going to burn out of time. I'm going to get talking about too many things here. Um, let's get to Africa because I want to get into the fact that, that beetles come in all shapes, all sizes, all colors. But let's talk about the largest beetle in the world. That is the Goliath beetle. The Goliath beetle comes from Africa. This particular one is from Cameroon. It's an awesome beetle. And check it out, man. The job of the Goliath beetle in Africa is not biting, stinging, or hurting anybody. The job of the Goliath beetle in Africa is pollinating fruit trees. Yeah, man. It flies around and feeds on flowers of the fruit trees those flowers then get pollinated and they produce fruit and now everybody in Africa, you know, fish, birds, animals, people, insects, everybody gets something to eat because of the Goliath beetle. The people in Africa will eat the Goliath beetles too. And they'll do both things. First, they'll either go find the grubs and they'll dig the grubs up out of the ground. And let me tell you something, the largest beetle in the world, you saw the size. If those big grubs here made these beetles, can you imagine what the grub of this beetle looks like? I can tell you, it's the size of an apple. They are massive. And the people in Africa will eat the, the grubs. They just, they, they clean them off like an apple and they eat them. They also eat the Goliath beetles this, themselves. They'll peel them apart and scoop them out and they eat them just like an oyster and they taste just like soybeans. Yeah. Yes, I've done it. They eat just like, they, they taste like soybeans. Not a bad flavor, just kind of boring. You know, if you close your eyes and, and didn't know you were eating a, a, a an insect, you wouldn't really know. You wouldn't, you wouldn't get it. No big deal. All right? So you understand, all shapes, all sizes, all colors, but still nobody's hurting anybody. The only beetle that I would say that is designed to hurt people, but it also will hurt anything that threatens it, is a really cool beetle. It's a longhorn beetle that comes out of Brazil, comes out of Peru, or Peru, and it's called a scorpion beetle. This is a very unique beetle because it has, it has stingers on the end of its antenna, and it will actually use those in defense, and it can sting and inject venom that is relevant that is compared to a scorpion sting. How cool is that, man? I mean, that's awesome. I mean, it's not going to hunt you down and sting you, but if you grab it and pop it in your mouth, you're going to have a mouth full of stingers going. And most people would never expect a beetle to be able to sting you. That gives you an idea of, of the range of variety and abilities that these, these beetles, these insects have. Let's get into headgear real quick. I want to get into that because people get wigged out. They see these big beetles. They see all the big horns and the big scary stuff. And I mean, look, even a Hercules beetle looks like he has big pinchers. They're not pinchers. They're horns. And remember, they can open them and close them. If they dip the head down, they can open them and close them. And these big Hercules beetles coming out of Panama, coming out of South America, they're going to they're going to actually be able to open those and, and they can pick other males up and toss each other around like a couple of professional wrestlers. It's amazing that they can do that stuff. But there's, there's better ones out there. Check this out. This is the five-horned rhinoceros beetle. Um, comes out of Thailand. It's just a, another cool bug. But look at the headgear on these things, man. They are phenomenal. Four big horns out in front and one big horn right up the middle coming off the head. Just a phenomenal beetle. And again, coming out of Thailand. And to see these things alive is amazing. When you get one of these things alive, they're phenomenal. They're fun when they're dead. You know, they're fun to look at when they're dead. But to play with these things when they're alive are absolutely phenomenal. Check the headgear out on this dude. All right. 
For some reason, I, I he reminds me of like a reindeer, and I, I I know why that is. I'm just not going to get into details with it because it'll. But check that out, man. This is a cool beetle. Comes out of Taiwan. Just an outstanding set of headgear on him. Neat. All shapes, all sizes, all colors. Now, the one that takes the prize for size and headgear, check this out. This is the Atlas Beetle, comes out of Asia. Look at the headgear on that beetle, man. That is cool. Again, the Atlas Moth, or the Atlas Beetle, coming out. <laughs> talking about beetles. The Atlas Beetle, out of Asia. So... All right, let me get in and we're running out of time, man. We're running out of time fast. Let me get into colors because all shapes, all sizes, all colors is important. Give you an idea of the craziness of the colors that beetles can, can come in. This is a Chrysina. They call these jewel beetles. They come out of uh, all over Central and a little bit of South America, but mostly Central America. Uh, Costa Rica is the, one of the best places to get these. Panama is also a good place. But this is a Chrysina. This is the, the, and I, I'll let it, I'll let it speak for itself. Look at the color of that beetle. I hope, I hope you guys can see that. That is a golden color. It's a metallic gold color. And it just doesn't get any neater than that. To see these beetles flying around, phenomenal. And they'll come to lights at night. You put up lights and a lot of this stuff will come to lights because a lot of this stuff is so big it shows itself off and the predators will eat them real fast so they come out at, at night to stay alive a little longer. These beetles fly at night as well. You put up lights, this is the kind of cool stuff that comes into your lights in the rainforest. And it's a golden Chrysina. Now, here's another type of Chrysina. And these, and, and admittedly, I don't even know what this one is. It, it falls between two different types, but it's it's a variant. It's I don't think it's a, I don't know. It's a variant. That's all I got for you. It's a very cool Chrysina, but it gives you a really good example of what the colors can do. Not quite chrome silver, not quite gold, and not even a whole lot of green. But there's a green tint to it as well. Just an amazing beetle and the colors the way they get their colors is very 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 high tech very scientific um but i'm going to tell you i'm going to keep this simple for everybody just so you understand um without getting too too deep when a grub in the ground because that's where these guys would live they'd be feeding on rotten wood when they're in the ground and they're feeding and then they decide they've, they've matured and now they need to go into a pupa, a chrysalis or a pupa, a cocoon, if you will. And they're going to do that before they turn into the adult beetle. They go into that pupa. Now, according to National Geographic, I get, I try to look for good sources. According to National Geographic, the colors of these beetles can change a little bit. They can have forms and variations a little bit. And that is because the temperature of the, of the ground that they're pupating in can sometimes I don't want to say all the time because there's always there's always bugs out there breaking the rules, but they can sometimes change and have variations depending on the temperature of the ground they're pupating in. Beetles, man, what is there not to love about beetles? Look, guys, I got I got to go. I got I'm running out of time here. Look, it's all about beetles. Three hundred fifty thousand different types of beetles. Most numerous insect beetles. Every, all shapes, all sizes, all colors. And there's even one with stinging antenna. That is cool. All right? The scorpion beetle. All right, I got to go get those. There, those are too fun. I got to go find those. So I'm going to do that. It's down in Brazil or Peru somewhere. I'm going to go look for those. But you get it. All right, guys, if you like what you see here, if you enjoy what we're doing here, you got to go to my website, Ryan Bridge. No, don't go there. Go to RyanTheBugMan.com. RyanTheBugMan.com. Easy for everybody else, apparently not for me. Go there, go to Ryan Bridge, go to ryanthebugman.com and go on that contact page and hit me up. Tell me you like what you see. Tell me you like this. Hit me up questions. Let me know what you want to talk about and I can bring it to you every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. We can do this right here.
as much as you guys want. Guys, I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. I, I want you to be, be safe. I want you to be well. And most of all, let's all be kind. All right. Have a great day. Take care. We'll see you.